Here's a heartwarming story in the midst of a raging pandemic. There is a successful environmental experiment necessitated by consecutive droughts in Anandapur district of Andhra Pradesh. The Anandapur district is located in the extreme southwest of Andhra Pradesh, bordering the prosperous state of Karnataka. The district lies in the rain shadow area of both the southwest and the northeast monsoons. The district was declared as being desertified back in 1994 after the legislation of the Convention on Biological Diversity in the aftermath of the Rio Earth Summit of 1992. Officials in the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh then deemed it necessary to declare the water-stressed arid district of Andhra Pradesh as being in the process of desertification. The provisions of the Convention on Biological Diversity could be redeemed to combat drought and desertification, it was reasoned. The Desert Development Program was initiated by the Government of India. The state government of Andhra Pradesh empaneled NGOs too to combat drought and desertification. It was for the long haul, certainly. NGOs started working to mitigate the debilitating impact of the drought and desertification. Desertification brought on by chronic drought was perhaps the earliest manifestations of the then infant signs of climate change. NGOs realized that the calamity cannot be addressed in isolation. Holistic interventions were needed in the fields of poverty eradication, public health and nutrition, education, soil and water conservation, agro-diverse ecological interventions, moisture retention projects and so on. And now, within three decades, remarkably, Barren lands and sandy hills have turned out to be green fields where not a blade of grass grew hitherto. Malini Shankar of Digital Discourse Foundation reports in this two-part series. The Government of India and Andhra Pradesh government realized early on that the Anantapur district administration had to reverse desertification urgently. They formulated schemes like the Desert Development Program and the Integrated Watershed Management Program to combat drought and reverse desertification on priority. NGOs like Action Fetana Ecology Center, Society for Education Development Services, MyRADA and the Rural Development Trust, among others, were all roped in to combat desertification. The Sri Satya Sai Baba Trust, comprising global followers of the spiritual guru Sri Satya Sai Baba, supplied portable water in tankers to the villagers, sunk borewells and installed street corner taps for the short term. In this first episode, we take a closer look at some agro-ecological interventions undertaken by Action Fratana Ecology Center in some parts of Anantapur district. These agroecological interventions are a part of an intensive effort to combat chronic drought-induced desertification. Action Fraterna Ecology Center or AFEC created rainwater harvesting infrastructure to compound the rainwater. AFEC also took up construction of 153 check dams, 1,559 farm ponds, 10 percolation tanks, etc. for rainwater harvesting in the period between 2010 and 2021. Action Fraterna Ecology Center undertook agroecological interventions like watershed management with creation of fruit orchards, dairy farming, climate smart and dryland agriculture in deference to native nutrition and so on. Action Fraterna Ecology Center or AFEC in Anantapur made a special focus in its intervention, deploying zero budget natural farming, meaning minimal external inputs. AFEC adopted techniques of multi crop fruit orchards for replenishment of soil nutrition. Other techniques included climate smart agriculture, meaning dryland farming of drought resistant crops like millets and oil seeds. In fact, climate smart dryland cropping was so perceptive that it helped women supplement farm income in the agricultural households in drought struck Anantapur. Pot drip irrigation of fruit orchards and multi crop agricultural fields provided livelihoods 
to marginalized women farmers before sprinkler irrigation was introduced to replace pot drip irrigation between the years 2010 and 2021 action fratana ecology center undertook planting of fruit bearing trees in 20343.547 hectares in the kalyandur setur kundurpi raptadu atmakur and kuderu mandals or subdivisions of anantapur district these fruit orchards included tropical fruits like gooseberry sapota guava jamun trees mango tamarind neem custard apple etc all of them are rich in green foliage and native to dryland ecosystem and drought resilient trees additionally native cacti species that are succulent because of their water absorption capacity were used for contour bonding to help arrest rainwater runoff it is known fact that anantapur district is facing prolonged drought situations abnormal rain rainfall which leading leads to the shortage of water for drinking and agriculture the only way uh, watershed uh, using the watershed technique where soaking rain water is the only medicine to alleviate droughts in the anantapur district so uh, in the watershed the main component natural resource management where the basic concept treatment from ridge to valley is the uh, only way to treat for uh, this uh, bare and dry places which helps a lot uh, to regenerate and uh, re uh, improve the ground water and uh, greenery in this areas under this concept ridge to valley first treatment start drainage line treatment starts at uh, ridges where the staggered trenches con- continuous contour trenches water absorption trenches were taken up uh, then uh, sunken pits uh, valley side sunken pits loose boulder structures uh, check walls check dams gabions where water conservation ga- gabions soil moisture com- conservation gabions uh, check dams mini percolation tanks percolation tanks all this type of works will help to reduce the speed of water slow down next stand so these structures will help to stand the water then they percolate into the ground and improves the ground water as beside this improves the soil moisture and uh, improves the ground water in uh, next to the to promote natural re- regeneration in this area action fratana ecology center also started regreening 70 hill slopes in this hilly area of the extreme west of india's eastern ghats action fratana ecology centers agro ecological interventions explicitly focused on increasing green cover for replenishment of groundwater Other NGOs took a holistic approach including livelihood security, rural health, adult literacy and so on. These agroecological interventions undertaken by Action Fratana Ecology Center or AFEC included harvesting of rainwater, tree planting on a massive scale to recharge groundwater and restore soil nutrition to sustain the soil productivity. biodiverse multi cropping and climate resilient agriculture besides microfinance with a gender perspective for climate resilient agriculture these initiatives kept in mind native nutrition and involved microfinance and women self help groups women harvested native crops to give value addition by making traditional snacks made from native crops for instance Millets are the native crop in this dry arid area. By making these traditional snacks from native millets, it helped the women in augmenting the family's farm incomes. These were just some of the other interventions deployed. Action Fratana Ecology Center's unique groundwater replenishment project through watershed management involved raising fruit orchards whose leaf litter and compostable mulch 
contributed to creating soil organic carbon, thus sequestering carbon and increasing the moisture content in the soil. The district administration and other NGOs concentrated efforts to increase groundwater through rainwater harvesting infrastructure like check dams, water percolation tanks, contour bunding and other engineering interventions. This was what made AFEC a very unique intervention, setting it apart from the others' interventions. So, uh, uh, within the watershed development program, a number of uh, activities like, for example, uh, uh, soil and moisture conservation, you know, contour bonding and those kind of activities, and then also rainwater harvesting, you know, uh, rainwater harvesting so that all the rainfall that falls is harvested and then used to, uh, to improve the groundwater and also for uh, uh, crop crops and so on. Watershed management involves groundwater replenishment through various agroecological interventions. These agroecological interventions included harvesting rainwater, tree planting on a massive scale to recharge groundwater and restore soil nutrition to reverse soil erosion. Also undertaken were natural resource management or landscape level conservation, biodiverse multi-cropping and climate resilient agriculture. These initiatives kept in mind native nutrition and involved microfinance and women's self-help groups too. Women harvested native crops to give value addition by making traditional snacks, for instance. Women availed microfinance help to start a business of traditional snacks with millets, the native crop to augment the family's farm incomes. These were just some of the interventions deployed. First, let us try to understand what is watershed. Watershed is also known as a catchment or a basin. Now, when you look at the, any water body, you have two parts. One is a catchment area, other one is a command area. Command area is the region where farmers grow the crop, while the catchment area is supposed to the region where water conservation, soil conservation happens. Because of that water conservation, people have the water in the command area so that they can grow the crop throughout the year. And also nutrient in the soil they'll have. Mismanagement of the watershed will lead to the losing of the nutrient as well as the water which leads to the situation where farmers have to struggle for the water. In such a situation the farmers uh, will have the, the, the scarcity of the water and the soil nutrient lead to the lesser yield in the crop. See, when you talk about watershed management, it is the soil and water management. See, the first and foremost thing one has to look at is the catchment. When the catchment is degraded to uh, the forest cover less than 30 percent, uh, the streams have become seasonal. That means the farmers get a water thro uh, not throughout the year, only during the three or four months. Now this gets reflected in their livelihood aspect also. Diverse pollinator enhances the pollination mechanism. So in the process the yield is very high in a region uh, where the farmers are in the closer vicinity of the forest compared to the farmers who are away. You know, farmers in a degraded catchment, their the yield is uh, very uh, lower, even for the same crop. Stakeholder participation, meaning the participants had a stake in agroecological activity, ensured that the participants took keen interest in the self-serving activities. Apart from fruit orchards and rainwater harvesting infrastructure, microfinance for climate smart agriculture as well as to buy milch cows were given to farmers. One farmer, Narsimha Reddy of the Yaragunta village in Raptadu Mandal of Arantapur district today earns 1200 rupees per day by milking cows and supplying the milk to the local milk dairy. Action Fratana Ecology Centre took up restoration of soil nutrition to reverse soil erosion. Explaining this further, Dr. Y. V. Malareddy, Director of the Action Fratana Ecology Centre in Anantapur, told Digital Discourse Foundation in an exclusive interview. Desertification manifested by high level of eroded soils, reduced vegetation and biomass, and reduced the you know wildlife and reduced birds, reduced kind of insects and so on. Within the watershed development program, a number of uh, activities like, for example, uh, uh, soil and moisture conservation, you know, contour bonding and those kind of activities, and then also rainwater harvesting, you know, uh, rainwater harvesting so that all the rainfall that falls is harvested and then used to, to improve the groundwater and also for uh, uh, crop crops and so on. And when the biomass and tree cover is increased, then 
other uh, uh, you know living beings like uh, birds insects and all that the, the whole ecology will really uh, develop one other thing uh, when you look at the watershed management it involves both engineering and ecological approach unfortunately in our country the watershed management is uh, hijacked by the civil engineers who only gives the importance to the check dams you know check dam in integration with the ecological approach that means the catchment management maintaining the green cover of native species is equally important see when you have the check band but if you don't have a catchment with the native species green cover then the siltation is higher because of the silt transport from the catchment your uh, check band uh, the gets uh, filled with the silt scanty rainwater had to be collected wherever it fell congruous to the topography the ngos built small check dams that contained the water runoff native trees were planted in watersheds which helped permeate the tree roots with percolating rainwater runoff native trees also helped create leaf litter and biodegradable mulch that nourished soil nutrition restoration of soil nutrition helps mitigate soil erosion and improves the moisture in the environment fruit orchards were raised in what is referred to as watersheds we are promoting natural farming in anantpur district farmers are uh, uh, facing crisis because of uh, chemical agriculture chemical agriculture is uh, not profitable anymore and uh, it is uh, very hazardous to the soil Natural farming includes organic manures completely doing away with chemical fertilizers. Action Pratana trains farmers in making mulch from green leaf litter and compost waste. Herbal concoctions including cow dung, cattle urine, clay or loamy soil from the site, organic brown sugar rest are mixed and fermented to quite literally feed the earthworms in the agricultural fields. coupled with microbes this organic biodegradable manure enriches soil nutrition increasing the agricultural yield the farm yield is so rich in taste and health quotient that they fetch better incomes for the farmers in the process the soil nutrition is restored helping in moisture retention and sustenance of healthy soil and biotic life Rainwater percolation makes it another win-win sustainable ecological intervention to mitigate the impact of climate change. So, um, if Action for Tamil Ecology Center has been uh, promoting uh, natural farming, supporting farmers uh, since many years, and uh, as part of natural farming, uh, we are trying to convert as many farmers as possible into natural farming uh, from uh, conventional chemical agriculture. so we are working with around 10000 farmers right now trying to helping them to convert into gradually convert into natural farming we are working in focusedly in 35 villages of across three mandals in uh, in our project area raptadu uh, kundurpi and uh, settur mandals we are working in collaboration with uh, raitu sadhikara samstha which is a government uh, wing which is also promoting natural farming as part of uh, natural farming we encourage farmers to follow some protocols of uh, natural farming applying farmyard manure and also uh, doing seed treatment with uh, bijamruta jeevamruta and other things and also uh, going for mixture croppings uh, border croppings trap croppings and we also promote uh, jeevamruta uh, done with cow dung uh, cow dung cow urine and other things which is a very good uh, go- very good uh, soil fertilizer uh, fertilizer booster Uh, we also promote uh, mechanical pest controls uh, methods and also biological pest control methods along with uh, uh, promoting vegetation in the soil so these things we will do uh, encourage farmers to reduce use of chemicals in the uh, agriculture first to village nalli hogi planning at the village level involves net planning as well as catchment level planning net planning involves activities to be taken up at each farm holding level like soil and moisture conservation farm forestry planting of fruit trees etc net planning has to be done with informed participation of the farmer so that we sustain the activities at the holding level catchment level planning mainly involves rainwater harvesting structures like check dams and tree plantation as well as pasture lands development ವಾಟರ್ಶೆಡ್ ಡಿವೈಡ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂತ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಬೀಳಿಸ್ ಬಂದಿಸ್ತೀವಿ 
I was given 350 mango saplings to plant in my land. We are watering our plants thanks to the farm pond constructed by AFEC with NABARD funding. As alternate cropping, we used to grow groundnut. I am looking forward to a rich harvest of mangoes next year. It will give us a good picture of the village. Then we organize a watershed development committee with representatives from all sections through a consensus building process. Simultaneously, we organize awareness generation activities on what is watershed development, what activities will be implemented and how it will benefit different sections of the village including the landless. In all these processes, we give high priority for enlisting women's participation including in watershed development committee. The participation of people and their indigenous knowledge is very critical for sustainable watershed development. Watershed development is a multidisciplinary intervention involving soil science, hydrogeology, mineral irrigation, groundwater, agriculture, horticulture, forestry, animal husbandry, farm forestry, afforestation, fodder development, etc. So inputs from all these disciplines are incorporated involving the government agencies and others in planning and implementation together with the farmers. The watershed development committee plays a key role in decision making, planning and implementation including the management of watershed funds. Transparency and accountability are very important aspects in enlisting people's participation in watershed development. The success of our watershed development programs is mainly due to high level of people's participation, incorporating their indigenous knowledge, interdisciplinary approach, total transparency and accountability. Action Fratana Ecology Center or AFEC was one of the NGOs entrusted with watershed management. Headed by Dr. Malla Reddy, a senior development worker, AFEC took up restoration of environment through watershed development and biodiverse agroecological interventions. These interventions included soil and moisture conservation, rainwater harvesting, farm forestry, planting of fruit trees on a massive scale to regenerate the degraded environment. Action Pratana Ecology Centre took up intense watershed measures to harvest the minute amount of rainfall that was occurring in the chronically drought-prone district. Restoration of soil nutrition ensured rainwater absorption and percolation. Then catchment area conservation had to be taken up very intensely. The leaf litter from native trees generated the much needed mulch, increased soil organic carbon, which helped natural regeneration of the degraded environment. It further aided percolation of rainwater and prevented rainwater runoff and increased the recharge of groundwater. Multi cropping, when you have multi cropping, the roots are diverse. Because of the diversity of roots, you have diverse microorganisms in the soil. Because of the diverse microorganisms in the soil, soil becomes porous or permeable, which allows the water to percolate when it rains. Coming back to your question of the multi-cropping is certainly a good uh, this one, which will help in maintaining the moisture as well as the allows the water to percolate. See, the, the catchment should act as the water reservoir. So when it aids in water percolation and retain the water, you will see the water available to the farmers and sufficient moisture level in the soil, which is what is required for the optimal uh, cropping and optimal yield in the crop. To enable rainwater percolation through sandy soil, Action Fratana started planting native trees in sandy soils. The root systems of the native trees, coupled with the microbes in its root system, sequestered carbon and fixed nitrogen. The leaf litter from native trees like neem, tamarind, beech, mango and other native fruit trees effectively created mulch which decomposed to make fertile topsoil. Further, multi-cropping of native trees in watersheds became the mantra for win-win sustainable solutions. 
Multi-cropping ensured that diverse microbes feed and treat the topsoil. Over a period of 10 to 15 years, the groundwater started gradually getting replenished. Farmers who had perennially suffered famines now got free fruit tree saplings. Drip and sprinkler irrigation provided constant moisture supply to the young fruit tree saplings. Gradually, the entire desertified landscape of Anantapur came to be covered in a shimmering lush green canopy, a sight to behold for the eyes. If a desertified landscape can be turned into a fertile horizon with fruit yielding native crops, turning a sandscape into a fertile agricultural ground, its success needs replication in other desertified landscapes in the world which is plagued by climate change now. Two decades after India got independence, food shortages compelled then Prime Minister Mrs. Indira Gandhi to take drastic measures for safeguarding India's food security. The so-called Green Revolution or Food Revolution of 1969 laid emphasis on procurement of staple food crops of the majority like wheat and rice with the express purpose of mitigating starvation. This was done at the expense of minor millets and other diverse cultivars native to India's vast agro-diversity like cereals, pulses, grains, sprouts, as well as the profligacy of horticultural produce which were ignored. This misplaced emphasis on carbohydrate-based cereal procurement devastated the market for agro-diverse crops in India. It has also contributed significantly to the epidemic proportion of endocrine disorders in the country's newer generations. This also took a severe toll on soil conservation. Soil nutrition was depleted, moisture stress increased without the microbes playing their part on root systems of agro-diverse cultivars. So monocrop has emerged because of uh, this kind of uh, you know, cash-driven uh, you know, green revolution model yeah, this, this, this kind of a paradigm uh, which is driving uh, people to markets and cash killed the uh, food crops, food diversity, native uh, uh, you know, food also. So now uh, at the same time also another coincidence that has happened that has worsened the situation was the rice was given at a very subsidized rice in Andhra Pradesh in 1983 onwards, 83 onwards and so uh, one rupee or two oh, rupees, case, two rupees a year first. So, so if, if not, if, uh, uh, along with rice, if they had to give all other, other uh, uh, you know, uh, food grains also, that would have been better. But they stuck to food because food uh, rice lobby is very strong all over the you know country. Rice lobby is very strong. So they zeroed in on rice in South India and wheat in uh, mostly wheat in uh, uh, North India. Villagers, for instance, readily agree that the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act has given them livelihood security while simultaneously improving community assets and reversing migration. Groundnut is better, but presently, if you look at the rains, it is 100 to 150 k. Which is the matter, bro. In the next episode, you will meet many villagers who have benefited from such agro-ecological interventions. Don't forget to tune in. I've been coming to Anantapur for the past 2.5 decades. I, I've been doing stories, I've, once I volunteered. So I know how the projects have been implemented by various NGOs. I have seen it firsthand. And over the past two and a half decades, I have seen how sandy, rocky, soils have turned out to be green sandscapes. The, it's, the greenery stresses to the horizon. It's an, this time when I went to Anantapur, I was very inspired. I am Malini Shankar, reporting for Digital Discourse Foundation.